Hi guys, today I'm talking in English because I'm doing an interview with Nick Lippert, one of the top producers in Chicago, Illinois, and we are talking about the real estate market, what is going on in the real estate market in the United States, are the prices going up, are they going down, is the vacancy rate going up, going down, what's happening over there, and on the other side we are also talking about the health situation, what's going on in the hospitals. Enjoy the interview and if you have any questions to Nick, write down below in the comments. Hello guys, I'm happy to introduce you Nick. Nick, hi, happy greetings to Chicago. He's one of the best producers in real estate there. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you for having me on. What's going on in the, in the States right now? Here in Germany, we really don't know much. We only see the stuff in the media and uh, in New York, bad things are happening right now, but how is the situation for real? Like you're living there, how do you feel about COVID? Well, you know, we're all, uh, most states at this point in the United States are under a shelter in place. So actually, this is my house that you're seeing in the background. Um, so we're at home, but we're working from home. A lot of people are continuing to work. And in the real estate market, that means we're not completely closed. We're doing a lot of activities, so we're seeing activity, but it's a, at a greatly reduced rate. And every state in America is handling real estate differently. So okay. it really depends on where you are as to whether you can show houses, what you can do, um, you know, whether people want their houses shown. So it's been very interesting. So it's, this is an uncharted territory for us. And I, I look back to the great financial crisis of 2008, 9, and 10 for some reference, because I've been doing this for 22 years. So I saw 9-11, I saw the great recession. But, uh, you know, this is a virus. This isn't an economic issue, first and foremost, mm -hmm. but it's causing a huge economic issue. So there's a lot of questions with that. And, you know, looking forward to answer what I can and give you my thoughts on it. Yeah, nobody knows how it will go on. Do you feel already some prices are going down or how is the situation on the prices right now? So it's interesting. Uh, everything that we've done for the most part that we worked on prior to COVID. So deals that we were working on and put under contract prior to March 15th, those deals are still closing for the most part, unless the buyer has lost their job. Now we have massive record unemployment, 6.6 um, .6 million last week. So really a large number of people are losing their jobs, but the ones that are staying you know, in their positions and able to continue to work, They want to close on the houses because they're not sure if they'll have a job in two months. And they also feel like the interest rates are at record lows. So the fundamentals are still there. Properties are still appraising out. And some properties are actually even having the appraisal waived. So that's the deals we did prior to March 15th. The new buyers coming on right now, and there are new buyers. And in the state of Illinois, we are technically as realtors an essential service. So we can continue to work with buyers, even though most of us are doing a lot of things virtually. I'm doing showings on vacant homes because there's mm -hmm. no one in there to infect me or get infected. We're wearing masks and gloves. But a lot of those showings, I'm recommending that the person, my buyer, stay home, whether that's an investor or a home buyer, stay home. I can preview the homes for them, do uh, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Zoom meetings like we're on right now, and uh, they can kind of narrow their choices down that way. So there's activity, but we do see some sellers dropping their price due to the uncertainty, particularly if they were an Airbnb. So some of those vacation homes, what we're noticing with the vacation homes is they haven't had income since about March 1st. And okay. they're concerned moving forward, those vacation homes, those short-term rentals, because we know that even though we're going to probably be out of quarantine or shelter in place, in a few weeks, hopefully, sometime in you know May, when it's safe to do so, uh, and each state, it looks like, is going to be creating their own plan, that is not going to mean that there's going to be summer festivals, that there's going to be big concerts, the things that were drawing in people to rent out these short-term rentals, that market is potentially gone for six months or more. So my investors that have invested in Airbnb and short-term rentals, they're the ones that are potentially dropping prices right now, along with some uh, other people that just they want to get rid of the property before they see anything else happening. So, so far, prices have not gone down a lot. And if we get out of here in terms of being able to go back to work, physically work in our offices and safely do so, and we see the 
curve go down, then we'll see prices balance out because we had a wonderful January, February, and March. My company, Exit Strategy Realty, we had the best February we've ever had. We had the best March we ever had, even though the second half of it, we were essentially closed and working from home. So the fundamentals here were wonderful. Uh, we had a very strong economy. So if we can get out and get back to work once it's safe to do so, once we've really flattened the curve on this, then I don't think we're going to see a long-term depreciation in prices. But there's a little bit of opportunity for the savvy buyer right now uh, between low interest rates. And then also, one other thing I'd like to note is that some of us, myself included, I feel like there's a potential that if there's another round of stimulus from the government, it may actually include some sort of incentive for buyers, for whether it's first time home buyers or all purchasers. In addition to these very low interest rates, there may actually be some sort of incentive like they did with a tax credit in 2009. I sold dozens of homes that way. A lot of uh, buyers got a great deal because they got a big tax credit from the government. Look for mm -hmm. the government to potentially do something like that in the next round of stimulus, which would spur on buyers as well. Okay. And uh, how do you feel about the investors? Like, uh, do the investors still buy for long-term rent properties and apartment complexes? How is, how is this market changing? This is not a market for flips and it has not been a market. I think, you know, I got into the flips uh, myself with my own development company. This has not been a market for flips in quite a while, in at least over a year, year and a half, maybe even longer, because there was a slow, steady appreciation. There was less inventory. There weren't a lot of foreclosures and short sales that naturally are conducive to being flipped. So this is not a market for flippers. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme type of market. What this is is a potentially good market for buy and hold, because even though prices have not gone down too much, There are some sellers willing to heavily negotiate because of the uncertainty. And also with the record low interest rates, if you can get an interest rate of you know, 3.25 or something like that uh, percent, maybe a little higher on a bigger uh, commercial loan, that's still incredibly less expensive over time than a 5% uh, rate, which is what we were trending towards about a year ago as interest rates started to climb prior to this crisis. Okay. In Germany, we have a kind of a little bit different interest rate stuff. So I don't, I'm not sure if the people will understand it. In the States, you have one interest rate. In Germany, you have interest rate pr pr plus a redemption, which is separate. In okay, the low, here in we the contract. have interest rate. No, no redemption charges here. Um, we just do an interest rate. And that's most interest rates, they uh, are locked in for the entire term of the loan. So if someone is getting a mortgage loan for 20 or 30 years, if you lock it in now at this incredibly low rate, you have that rate for the entire 30 years, which means your borrowing cost over time is you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars less, maybe millions of dollars less if you're talking a big commercial building. So okay. there is opportunity even in this uncertainty, but it's not a get rich quick, it's not a flip, It is a Long buy term. and hold environment. So I've got people out looking at apartment buildings right now, not even because they want to be out in this particular health environment, but they want to be out in this banking environment uh, while we see interest rates this low. And they only went down because of this current crisis. Okay, we, we already sell, sold to one house this morning. So people are still buying also in Germany. That's really good. And uh, do you think the April will also become the best April ever or not? No, <laughs> But, you know, sadly, no, I already know that. So I use a, a tool called showing time and that mm -hmm. tracks the number of showings uh, across the United States and showings are down dramatically in the state of Illinois. As of last night, I looked at this knowing, you know, you and I would be on today in, sta in the state of Illinois showings are down 59%. Now that means still 41% activity over a baseline. Um, that means there's people looking. But it is people that are looking, willing to go out right now or view virtually with a realtor like me. And also um, vacant houses. Vacant houses are still being shown and vacant houses are still selling because there's no safety issues or less safety issues, as you say. And mm -hmm. also that seller may be more motivated because they don't have any rental income coming in either. So those are really the houses I'm focused on right now for buyers and sellers. Um, but there is activity. Now, if you look like a state like New York, they're down 92% because they got hit so much harder and they've got to do even more to flatten the curve. They are, their showings are down 92%. So they're going to have a very hard April, May, June. 
And the biggest thing that I think is going to be important and relevant in this is how exactly, how long are we sheltering in place? Because if we're sheltering in place through June or July, if we see these employment, unemployment numbers continue to rise through May and June, you're going to have a very much less uh, active pool of buyers, less buyers in general, and that could be potentially where we run into a longer term issue. Uh, you know, I'm pretty optimistic at this point that we're going to have a large burst of energy if we're back out and moving safely in May or June. If this moves longer than that, if we have restricted movement and illness longer than that, uh, I'm a little bit more concerned. But so far, if we're in this short time, the government's done, the PPP loans, the stimulus package, individual checks that are just now starting to get out through direct deposit, that's going to help some people through this crisis and, and get them through if we continue to be able to uh, get out of here and work again and be safe and be healthy sometime in the late spring, early summer. Okay, so, so you're saying the next, next two or three months uh, it's okay for the people to survive and if it's going more long, it's getting more difficult for everybody. So it's what going you, to be difficult because uh, if you look at, you know, right now, the bars and restaurants, the bars are closed. closed. These restaurants, restaurants are, some are able to open and do carry out only. Well, that means you're missing the servers. Hair salons are closed. Nail salons are closed. All these small businesses that are closed, if they get that PPP money, the uh, Small Business Administration loan, they may be able to hold out to get through this and then reopen. If they go six months, they're not going to be able to reopen a lot of these places. And a lot of us probably then won't feel comfortable spending money on some of those items. So it kind of creates a domino effect that mm -hmm. uh, we, have to, we have to flatten the curve, get healthy, and then get back to work. But it, we don't know how long that's going to be yet. It all depends on the next couple of weeks. So at my company, uh, you know, we structured ourselves two years ago. Um, to run lean and mean because I got involved in, in flip properties and spent too much money. That was a blessing in disguise because we were structured ready for something like this. A lot of companies, we had a record stock market. They've been spending wildly. A lot of companies are not in that position because they didn't do something dumb like I did. They didn't restructure. They thought this was going to go on forever. Yeah, we, were okay. already in, we were already in the longest stock market bull market in history. So, you know, we were, there were some signs that we were already overpriced on some things. Some valuations were wild. In real estate, not so much. You could buy a property with the low interest rates right now, cash flow on that property, uh, and, and have a good investment, a buy and hold investment. It already wasn't a good time to flip, but it's still a good time to buy and hold. Okay. And how about the, the, um, the support from the government for like hairdresser, restaurants, bars, coffees? Do they get... Uh, money from the government to survive this hard time or how, how do they handle it in the states so there's a couple things that are that are helping number one there is a strong unemployment package uh so that's helpful the second thing is that the small business uh loans there's two types there's the ppp mm -hmm. loan and the emergency loan those are just now getting processed and if they get hopefully get out the money gets out to people in the next couple of weeks those business owners will be able to survive uh, uh, the stimulus checks, uh, $1,200, hopefully those get out quickly. They're supposed to be hitting bank accounts, uh, direct deposit for a lot of people tonight or tomorrow. That will help some people survive. But that's, that's meant to be for a six to eight week period, not 12 weeks, 16 weeks or longer. So, you know, if we're in here longer in our homes like mine, we may be needing a, another round of stimulus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough situation. And how is uh, the situation in the in the health th health system, like in the hospitals and stuff? Is it is it okay or is it full or how is the situation? Do they have free free beds or not or? What's so you know, I talked to I've got quite a few friends in the medical field and in the nursing field, and and you know everybody on the front lines, even you know my. My friends that are that are at, uh, pharmacists at, at Walgreens mm -hmm. and Walmart putting their lives on the line to get some of them are getting sick. What they tell me is, you know, there are people sick right now. It seems like there are enough beds. The question is, are there enough tests? And mm -hmm. that's where I hear a lot of, of um, complaints and a lot of concern is that there's not enough tests at this point. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not in the field, but I know what I hear from reputable people. And so the testing kits are the real big thing. The curve appears to be flattening in some spaces, uh, spaces like Illinois, 
Uh, you know, our deaths are going down as of today, which is, is, is helpful to hear and gives us some hope. But uh, the big concern is tests. You know, who actually had it? There were a lot of people that felt sick that didn't get tested, couldn't get tested at the beginning. They got better. Well, did they have it? Can they reinfect people? That's the question. Uh, those are the concerns that a lot of my friends in the medical community have. Um, so right now it appears, you know, New York was hardest hit. Um, they're seeing some success in flattening the curve. So it's a matter of, will the other states follow? Will testing kits become more widely available? Will there be an antibody test kit to see who actually had it? How will we go back to work? Will we go back to work in phases? Uh, a lot of questions still remain. So the next couple of weeks are going to be crucial. How much um, is a test? Do you have to so pay the for the is, test or? Yeah. So it depends on what your insurance policy is. Um, and you know, I've been told by some people that, well, everybody that needs a test will get a test, but the tests are not always available for people. Uh, so it's a more of, it's not a matter of cost as much as a matter of availability. So, you know, with universal healthcare, hopefully people are taking themselves to the hospital if they have symptoms, but do they actually get a test or do they just get treatment? That's been where there's been some concern. Okay. So uh, in the situation in general, how do you think about it? Do you think it will become the next big financial crisis or can we get uh, a little hit and that's it? Well, it's already become a massive financial crisis in terms of unemployment numbers. Uh, you know, the stock market seems to have leveled off, although that could change at any point. Uh, it's all going to depend on the next six to eight weeks. If we get moving again, if we get working again, if we get healthy, we will see this as a pause. And that's something that, you know, a couple of friends of mine have mentioned. I've got a good friend that's a PhD student that said, you know, Nick, this is a pause at this point. Um, do something with this time to be productive, be helpful, be thoughtful, be mindful of other people. But if we go beyond this temporary pause and we're doing this level of illness and, and restraint at home into the summer, it, it could be potentially a very, very damaging time for the economy that drags out beyond the next three months. You know, if, it, if we start moving again the next month or two, I could see a full recovery uh, by the end of the summer. That's what I'm reading in a lot, a lot of the economist predictions. If we drag this out into the summer, if we're not able to stop the curve or there's a reinfection of some sort, uh, that you, this could be a longer term recession that has severe consequences and i certainly hope that isn't the case okay okay thank you nick for your insight in the united states i wish all the best for you and much success in 2020 with your business thank you good to see you talk to you soon